In the not too distant future, most humans are successfully made in labs and eugenics will rule society. Everybody is listed in a genetic database. Those created in laboratories are called valids and those created naturally are called invalids since they are more prone to inherited disorders, which can range from baldness to pure illnesses. Although it is against the law to discriminate based on genetics, employers nevertheless use saliva on resume envelopes or urine tests to profile an applicant's genotype. Spoiler ahead, Watch out! This meant that invalids would always be assigned to menial jobs. After taking his time shaving and cleaning his body, Vincent burns any remaining hair and dead skin. In order to pass it off as his own, he next grabs a urine bag from the refrigerator and attaches it to his groin. In addition, he inserts a small amount of blood into a fake fingertip, which he then cautiously attaches to his real finger. Vincent then goes to work at the Gattaca Aerospace Corporation. Vincent allows the device to collect blood from his fictitious fingertip, as all employers are required to do in order to be given entry through an identity check. After that, he uses a computer at his desk to run various spaceflight plans. He also uses a tiny tool to remove any traces of DNA from his keyboard. This is when the mission director stops by to let him know that he has been selected to accompany the flight that will travel to Saturn's moon Titan in one week. Once the man leaves, Vincent covertly opens a jar and scatters nails, skin, and hair all over his work surface. Then he places a hair on the comb he keeps in the drawer of his desk. Afterward, he has a substance test to ensure he is clean before the mission begins. He offers the urine sample from the hidden bag and the machine indicates that the patient is Jerome and that the sample is valid. Irene, a co-worker, stops by to congratulate Vincent on landing the mission. Then a flashback revealing Vincent's early years takes place. Born naturally, which was already uncommon back then, Vincent's mother unexpectedly became pregnant when the two of them had a quickie at the beach. As soon as the physicians grabbed him, they took a blood sample and determined that he had a high risk of developing several illnesses, therefore his life expectancy was 30 years. Vincent had a very tough childhood. Not only that, but due to his gene flaws, Vincent's insurance would not pay for any problems he encountered, so no school would admit him. In the end, his parents chose to use a genetic lab when they wanted to become parents to a second child. Though Anton was delighted to spend time alongside his brother, Vincent noticed that his parents had a favorite. The brothers used to play a game called Chicken in the Sea while their parents hadn't been looking. The purpose of the game was to see who was able to swim the furthest from the coast before feeling afraid and turning around. In this competition, Anton consistently succeeded over Vincent, which worsened his feelings of inadequacy. Vincent developed an interest in space and an ambition of becoming an astronaut as he grew older. Despite his parents' warnings that his genes would prevent him from being hired, he ignored their advice and attended a few interviews. To his dissatisfaction, no one hired him, according to what his parents had expected. The brothers went swimming again, much to Anton's surprise, and Vincent won this time. Vincent had no choice but to go back and support, exhausted Anton in getting back to the shore. They had not gone swimming together since then. Vincent moved out of his parents' house to follow his desires. Vincent ultimately discovered work as a janitor at Gattaca. While cleaning the offices, he occasionally utilized the computer while no one was looking, enjoying the everyday launches. In addition, he discovered the daily blood prick and grabbed the tiny sensor that had fallen off a machine. The head janitor would make fun of him, given that he wasn't going to stop dreaming. In the end, driven by his desire to move forward, he made the decision to get in touch with a man on the underground scene who introduced him to the real Jerome, a former swimming champion with an excellent IQ and excellent health aside from his legs. He got hit by a car which left him disabled and bound to a wheelchair. It was unrecorded and occurred abroad, so no one knew Jerome was invalid. A lengthy process of transformation started when Vincent paid both guys to obtain Jerome's identity. He obtained contact lenses to replace his glasses and match Jerome's eye color. He cut and trimmed his hair similarly to Jerome's. The final obstacle was that Jerome was taller than Vincent, which meant that Vincent had to deal with a painful surgery in which his legs would be broken and stretched until their heights matched. In order to have Jerome's address, Vincent relocated into his apartment. For the first few days, he had to relax in order to recover after his surgery, which meant that he was frequently suffering. While Jerome continued to fill bags with urine and blood, Vincent learned how to write using his other hand, and also how to sign his name. Vincent was reminded that he had high standards when Jerome once showed him his silver medal. Jerome also instructed Vincent to refer to him by his middle name, Eugene. When Vincent's interview day finally arrived, he tested a urine bag on the machine, but received an incorrect warning since the urine included alcohol. After examining several bags, 
Vincent discovered the last one to be clean and took it with him. He then started to blame Jerome for the repercussions of his addiction. When the doctor took the test in the office, the device recognized Vincent as Jerome, making it a legitimate test. He was employed right away based only on his IQ. They didn't even send him for a formal interview. After that, Vincent had to properly wash his body every day in order to remove any loose hair, nails, or skin, all of which were burned in an incinerator. Seal-proof bags were used to store all the clothing to prevent infection. Vincent would maintain a false appearance while working by spreading Jerome's samples on his desk and using the fictitious fingertips stained with Jerome's blood to pass the identity check at the door. No one ever voiced suspicions. At the moment, the corporate administrator has been killed with a keyboard and everyone in Gattaca is terrified. Gazing at the disturbing scene, Jerome scratches his eye and misses to realize that one of his eyelashes has fallen out. The police show up shortly after to collect every trace of DNA from the crime scene, including the eyelash. Vincent will still be traveling to space, and the trip is not being canceled. He tells Jerome the news, and they decide to celebrate by going out. Irene gets Vincent's hair from his drawer at work and brings it to a matchmaking service, where they do a few tests and determine that Vincent seems an excellent match. The primary suspect is now Gattaca after the police forensic section checks all the samples the next morning and finds that an enigmatic invalid had been there. Moving back to the side of Vincent, he spins the chair's wheels erratically to mimic exercise while placing the little sensor he stole during his days as a janitor on his chest to monitor his heartbeat for 20 minutes. After being put through a running test at Gattaca, Vincent swaps out the office sensor for the one he brought from home. Investigating the incorrect profile from the eyelash, the detectives find that it belongs to a janitor who vanished a few years prior. Vincent becomes uneasy when he hears them talking about the situation. Even worse, once the recording concludes after 20 minutes, Vincent's actual comparatively high pulse becomes visible. He dashes into the locker room right away. Irene meets Vincent after work and confesses that she read his DNA sequence, which was, of course, Jerome's. She acknowledges that she's a lab baby, but still has a chance of heart failure. She will therefore never be permitted to participate in a mission. Irene gives him a lock of her hair and tells him to test it to find her genetic faults. As Vincent says, he doesn't recognize anything wrong with her. Vincent throws the hair aside and states the wind blew it. A while later, as Vincent is working at the computer, all the staff members receive an invalid profile as the individual is a wanted guy. Though fortunately no one recognizes him, Vincent is still worried. Upon arriving home, he informs Jerome that he is the main suspect and begins throwing off all the bags containing blood and urine. He is immediately stopped by Jerome, who tells him that they would never consider Vincent to be invalid. Vincent makes the decision to go out that evening since it would raise suspicions if he altered his routine. Upon peering out the window, Jerome notices that Irene has arrived to accompany Vincent. A little while later, Vincent and Irene go on their first date to a piano performance. In the meantime, the cops are gathering a number of evidence from the neighborhood in an attempt to identify the killer. But it's clear that none of their DNA fits the eyelash. They make the decision to look into every building that surrounds Gattaca. And when they arrive at Jerome's apartment, they decide to give him a blood test as well. The wheelchair-bound man's employment at Gattaca surprises the detective, so Jerome acts wounded and complains at him, claiming he was injured in training and accusing him of discrimination. Disregarding any difficulties, the detective walks away. Some cops remove all the trash bags at Gattaca. Irene and Vincent discover that the police have blocked the road because they are checking everyone in the vicinity on their way home. Without delay, Vincent takes off his lenses and claims he has been drinking to prevent himself from performing a spit test. Instead, the police get a blood sample from him where he uses his fake fingertip. Irene says she wants to show Vincent something when they pass the check. She pulls the car off a few miles ahead. Subsequently, the investigators find that the eyelash and a cup found in the workplace trash share the same DNA. According to the theory, the administrator was murdered by the invalid because he discovered the truth. Now at Gattaca, blood samples would be taken straight from the vein rather than using the fingertips. When it's Vincent's turn, he quickly swaps out his blood sample for Jerome's. When the investigators rerun the test, they find no error. Vincent and Irene go on a second date that evening. The police break up their lovely dance by gathering up various items containing DNA. DNA, such as cigarette ends and napkins. They also want to test people, so Vincent and Irene quickly flee by the back door. Irene asks who the detective shouted as, Vincent, to which Vincent responds by kissing her. Shortly after, the couple is spending their first time together in Irene's apartment. Vincent hurries to the beach in the morning after discovering a hair on the pillow, where he uses sand
sand and pebbles to remove extra skin from his body. In the meantime, the investigators determined that additional testing is necessary after comparing Jerome's and Vincent's profiles. They returned to Gattaca and, still referring to Jerome, grab the keys from Vincent's keyboard as they inquire about him. When Irene learns this, she quickly tells Vincent to go home because he appears sick. Irene informs the investigator that Vincent went home as he was sick, and Vincent realizes that she is speaking in code as he exits the building. The investigator invites Irene to join him at Jerome's house. Concurrently, Vincent calls Jerome and informs him that the cops are on their way and he should be himself. Jerome gets out of the wheelchair and carefully pulls his legs up the steps to the main floor. After extracting blood, the investigator is irate to discover that this is, in fact, Jerome. Subsequently, Vincent emerges, and Irene spots him beside Jerome as they address each other by that name. She is hurt, but Vincent follows after her, explaining what's happening and swearing that he didn't murder anyone. After a while, Vincent goes back to his desk and discovers the detective there. He makes a shocking revelation. The detective is none other than Anton, Vincent's brother. The two brothers hadn't seen one another since their teenage years. Anton charges Vincent with fraud and wants to have him arrested, which sparks an argument. Vincent believes Anton wants him to fail and reminds him of the previous race winner, which prompts Anton to challenge him once more. By the time the brothers arrive at the beach, it is night. A few hours later, Vincent gives Irene a visit and gives her a lock of his hair. But Irene throws it, claiming the wind did it. As a farewell, they spend the night together at her house because Vincent will be leaving for his mission. When Vincent gets back to his apartment the following morning, the lab has been covered in plastic. Jerome says he has enough sample bags for two lives, which suggests he won't be here when Vincent comes back. All he responds when Vincent asks where he's going is, I'm traveling too. Vincent receives a card from Jerome as well, with instructions not to open it until he is in space. Vincent then heads to Gattaca to prepare for his mission. The physician notifies him that the policy has changed. Vincent starts urinating in a cup. Despite the machine providing the incorrect profile, the doctor modifies it to Jerome's and yet permits Vincent to pass. When Jerome leaves the Earth and boards the spacecraft, Vincent ends things personally at the apartment by taking his silver medal and going into the incinerator. When Vincent gets close enough, he pulls open Jerome's card to find a large lock of his hair. In a way, Jerome has now also been to space. We really hope you enjoyed today's recap of the movie Gattaca. Please leave a comment below on what you loved about the movie and why. Be sure to like the video and please don't forget to support our channel by subscribing so you don't miss any amazing content. Until next time, light, camera, action. We look forward to seeing you in our next video.